Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ralph, and this week I'm going to feature a build here, actually a couple of builds here, of the 1999 Shelby Series 1, a car that uh, Carroll Shelby had dreamed about and been wanting to build on his own, his own car. It was actually started in, well, I think in 1994 and really started to get underway by 1996. There was a teaser production car that was out claiming, you know, with the Oldsmobile engine, 500 horsepower, but it was developed and built from a clean sheet of paper. It's an all carbon fiber body, um, even though it's painted aluminum. Uh, most of them are, not all of them. Uh, quite a feat, quite an undertaking, but uh, something that he was excited and really wanted to do and build. So he uh, um, got it going and, and it, they were being built. But uh, part of the issues and there's a lot of drama wrapped up in this thing initially planned to be a 1998 model and but they had a lot of problem and red tape going through the EPA and DOT to get it uh, emissions legal and crash testing and a certified vehicle because uh, to sell it complete they had to go through all of that stuff so that's why they're all technically 1999s because that's what a certification uh, called for even though they were produced all the way till about 2002 till the company kind of went bankrupt but they had taken a lot of deposits and you know they were initially claiming a 500 horsepower car and uh, as development was going and it was announced what was it going to be proposed it was going to be an $85,000 car in 1998 the base price jumped to 98,000 then 113 and by the time they were getting really close there they were $140,000 car um, as far as buying it new went and they were sold through Oldsmobile dealers because you know it's kind of interesting that you know it's one of the few times Carroll Shelby was involved with everybody but he initially started with Ford and you know in the 80s he ended up uh, doing Dodge um, so he had some Dodge things and, and developed the Viper but um, when it came to this car it's interesting that it's GM based it's got the old Aurora they were going to go with the original race engine 500 horsepower but by the time they got closer to production it's the 320 horsepower naturally aspirated so some of his uh, people have made deposits they were upset that the performance was going down um, they had made deposits the price was going up and even at that they still had to wait years for them to be made because even though they're 1999 models they were still selling them in 2002, and they only produced 249 of these cars. Well, there's more than that, but 249 of them have 17-digit VINs and were sold as complete new cars. Uh, then the, the bankruptcy happened, and there were some issues there. So, um, Carroll Shelby ended up buying the remaining stock of the cars. And so some of them, and I don't know how many... Or if the number, if the final number is 249, because different reports say different things. But I read that 249 of them had the 17-digit VINs and were sold new with warranties through Oldsmobile dealers. Even though Oldsmobile ended up going through bankruptcy, well, not bankruptcy, they were shut down in 2004. But uh, by 2002, the Series 1 was, was done. But Carroll Shelby had bought the remaining cars. And he turned around and, and sold them as CXX, CSX 5000 series component cars. They were missing engines and trannies. And he was able to do that to get away from certifications, just like he did his kit cars. Um, he couldn't sell them new, even though now you kind of can, due to some of the changes and some of the laws and the limited production status. Um, so it's quite interesting and, and, and quite a car, and, and still performance stats quite a car and even though um, roughly neither one of these models have the supercharger I wish they did but they do not there was roughly 80 of them that got the supercharger which that bumped it to um, over 400 horsepower and um, uh, it really improved its uh, performance I guess they did one that did 12.8 seconds in a quarter mile and 4.4 0 to 60 and that was a supercharged model the car was getting a bad reputation or it was just bad management as far as you know how it was being done and, and portrayed and advertised but uh, it's a it's a car that gets plenty of attention today and the uh, collectors are going after them um, because it's one of the rarest Shelby's and probably one of the most misunderstood because you can see it's got 
a lot of the Shelby look to it, the Cobra look to it. But it, to me, it's interesting that it's mostly GM. The cluster's GM. All the electronics are GM. The engine's GM. It's got a C5 Corvette six-speed manual. Um, I believe every single one of them was manual. Just about all of them were silver. You had your stripe options. Um, the very first one was red, like this one, stripes. Most of them got blue stripes. But some of them, and I wanted to do it on this one where the stripe went all the way down the back. I've seen a number of them with the stripes down the back. Some of them stopped early like they did on the Ravel kit. This is how Ravel actually issued the kit. I used two sets of decals to, to do this. It was quite a car and a, and a car that I really admire. So that's kind of why I have two of them. I built this one a little over 10 years ago. This is the one I started about 10 years ago and decided that I need to get it done. So there's a few deviations where this, this first red one, so I'll, I'll show you more of it. This first red one was built box stock with the stock decals. It's got the optional, optional Shelby on the side here, um, which most of the cars do not have, but uh, it was on the decal sheet. And then the stripes go into the scoop, which are part of the Ravel kit. I built this one pretty much right as Ravel did. It's got the kit tires that Ravel has, and then I did the underside. But this is my earlier build, and there are some fit issues with this. Getting the hood to close is kind of a pain, and the secret in that is uh, in the, the engine. It's these two lines right here. There's a couple of ways to deal with that. Um, the under hood's really nice. There's some decal. And then I really enjoyed doing the interiors. There's a lot to it. But let me just take the hood the rest of the way off here because there's a way to do it, but it's... Here we go. That way you can see more of the, but you see those two lines right there. Um, just make sure they're tucked down low and then uh, clearance and then your hood should fit. Uh, another thing with this particular kit, the interior tub tucks into the chassis. You know, as the directions say, tuck into the chassis. But don't glue it to the chassis. Because um, it glues in place to the body, but the chassis still needs to move. And then slide the chassis forward and then it glues up to these inner fenders and squares up to the chassis here. If you don't do that, you end up with some alignment and fit problems. I had built this one so long ago, I had kind of forgotten that. So I, on this one, you know, being my newest build, I glued the chat, the interior tub to the chassis. And then it forced the interior back. And I'm like, I got to realign the wheels, do some things here. And I'm like, I don't remember having to do all of that. And then one of the hoses I didn't get all the way down, so my hood didn't want to close. It was shifting the chassis. And so I remember I popped the chassis free. This one's not much different, but you can see the stripes underneath. And then once I remembered, I popped the chassis free, moved the interior, glued it in place. Um, when the wheels are in place, it's really easy to get back in there and glue the interior to the body. Get it in there. These are not the kit tires. The set of tires that was with this one were a little stretched and overgrown, and they just didn't quite fit. Um, so I had found another set of tires in my parts box that looked pretty good, and uh, they, they fit really well. So I continued on with those, and but this is the one I had trouble painting. It had so many paint jobs on it. I think my brother did it twice. I took it over from him, and I ended up putting at least four before I finally got to this one. Um... And then I had some decal issues, and I really wanted these metallic decals. So I ended up with uh, three sets of those. So thank you for that. And uh, um, because I had three sets, I was able to get everything on the front the way I wanted. And then I got them across the back and down the back to replicate how I really wanted it to be. I was half tempted to actually paint the stripes on, and I could have. But um, since I ended up with extra decal sheets. And this paint job didn't come out perfect either. I had... Um, it came out really, really nice, but if you can see in the back here, the shines just show it. For some reason, I started to get a small amount of bubbling on this decal, and but it's the only one. The hood is flat, the front is flat. I don't know what it is. It's just you know my my particular luck with this one. You know, a lot of these come out very, very nice, and and I get a, a lot of good work with it. But some of them I really do struggle with. So I'll show you the underhood of this one, even though it's really not any different. I would have loved to have done another supercharge, you know, one with a supercharger on it. Getting these hoods off is kind of a pain, but they do come off. Here we go. 
so the hood's off and then you can kind of see the hoses are a little bit more moved I actually re-glued this one farther onto the side of the radiator that pushed it out even more and then make sure when you get this hood this hose glued down the inner one that you push it all the way down here in the corner and get it glued because it tends to rise up and push on right there where the the snorkel of the the hood right here where it scoops in pushes up against the hose so and there's a little bit more clear coat on this one as far as the under hood goes and how it came out the only thing with this one I'm missing the inside rearview mirror it's the only part that I've lost I've got extra parts this one's got it and I would like to get another one but I don't want to buy a whole other kit for it so if any of you have a spare parts kit and have that part let me know I'd be interested uh, PayPal available and um, no that's the only part that I really need on this but I'm really happy with the way it came out and everything that worked out with it let me put the hoods back on it just display so much better with the hoods I gotta do it in front of me a little far reach for for that but this hood really fits really really well still pops up a little bit in the corner and then this one but there I got uh, one in silver and red one in silver and black which is the most two color combos which is you know how I had liked it and I decided not to do the optional Shelby on the side here but uh, I enjoyed building both of them even though this one really got to me a few times and I wanted to just throw it back in the box but I've already done that two other times already so I'm glad to finally have this one done but uh, through my reference pictures and everything I did see a black one that was for sale at Barrett and Jackson with red stripes and I thought that was really cool don't know if that was one of the CSX later cars because they came in other kinds of colors since they were component cars but a lot of the original ones were silver but I, it claimed to be the only one painted black with red stripes I have seen a silver with white stripes but uh, you know I, I admire the car and I think I'm gonna just keep it at uh, two built and, and not do any others but uh, it's a somewhat challenging build it doesn't quite go right together um, right out of the box you just got to be pretty careful with it as far as you know assembling it and paying attention to detail and test fitting because it does have a few issues if you've ever built one you probably understand there's a lot of people complaining about the hood fit but once you get some of those issues where you make sure that the the, the interior tub is squared to the body and you don't glue the chassis even though you got to tuck the tub in to the chassis to get the body in there because you can't you can't do it any other way but glue the interior tub with the chassis loose to the body and then glue the bot the chassis to the body after that everything should be squared up um, so the radiator should come up close to the front the hood should should fit fairly close and as long as you got the hoses tucked down and as far over as you can it allows the the hood to sit down um, others I've seen leave the ho the hose off the other build up I got that I didn't build he seriously ground the hoses away and cut them away but that's what uh, he ended up doing. They're, they're, they're pretty cool cars, and, and I really like the way they come out. So thank you for uh, uh, taking the time to listen to me rant about the, the Shelby Series 1 here. And I appreciate the subscriptions and sharing uh, my content and, and uh, all the comments and the likes and everything. So I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in, and you guys, you have a wonderful day.